halfway through August. Gonna just tell you about all the films I saw in July. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Cinema Darling, and yeah, I totally need to tell y'all all about the films I watched in July, because July has passed us favorite month because of my birthday, but also because of the movies that I saw, you know? The five movies that I saw for the very first time in the month of July is Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> Everyone stabs me as I say that. Fish Tank, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and Love Rosie. So without further ado, let's get into this. So yeah, Lilo and Stitch, we can all kill me, right? I actually clearly remember going to the movie theater with my mom as a child, and she was like, we're gonna see Lilo and Stitch. I was just like, no, mom, I wanna see Scooby-Doo, because I was obsessed with that 2002 live action movie. So obviously I had fantastic film choices as a child. But now I have seen Lilo and Stitch because it was on Netflix, and oh my gosh, this is just such a great Disney film. It isn't one of the correct Crowning Jewel like Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, but it's just fun. It kind of reminds me of how The Emperor's New Groove, that's very underrated, but it has that kind of fun with it. The music is really, really fun here. The story is really engaging, has a great message about Ohana, you know, and family and how life gets tough, but the family dynamic will always be there. It has that entertaining value to it. I think it's really cute. It's really great for kids. I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10. Now the next one I'll be talking about is Andrea Arnold's Fish Tank. It's been on my watch list for ever and a half, but I decided to finally watch it this month just because of the American Honey trailer. Oh my goodness, y'all. I am so excited to see American Honey because that trailer is actual art. I have watched it maybe 800 million times. And I was like, oh, Andriana directed this. She directed Fish Tank. Why don't I just watch Fish Tank in pre preparation for American Honey? <laughs> and Fish Tank is an incredibly, incredibly absorbing film. This is a very much so slaps of laugh character driven show. It's really just about this 15 year old gal who lives in the projects with her really just horrible mother and all this stuff. It may sound a little boring but honestly it's so engaging because of how high energy this film is. 13 by Catherine Hardwick has this like kinetic energy where there's not really a story you just watch these characters go through horrible things and make horrible choices. It's the same with Fish Tank but I really like the fact that the main gal, Katie Jarvis is her name, she was both likable and unlikable. You know, she was a very dynamic character. You could tell her life sucked and you could see why she made some of these choices that she was making. And Andrea Arnold's direction is stunning. There is a lot of one shots that just are marvelous. And Michael Fassbender's in this. Yeah, Fassie's in this. He does a great job. The last, I'm gonna say 20 minutes of some are just like, you cannot stop watching. You're just like, Gosh, something horrible is gonna happen. The dialogue is so raw here. I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10. I loved it. This makes me even more excited for American Honey for sure. So Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. I like watching musical adaptations because I really do love musicals and plays. I had never seen it, shockingly. And oh my goodness, y'all. <laughs> Whoa! I was completely, completely blown away from this film. Oh my goodness. See, I would probably say with musical movie adaptations, I'd probably say Les Mis is my favorite. I know there's people who hate Les Mis, say it's complete garbage. I love Les Mis. I'm gonna make it official right here, right now. Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber Fleet Street is my absolute favorite mu movie musical adaptation. The passion in this musical adaptation does not compare to any other musical adaptation I've ever seen. It's so well done and it, everything is just excellent from the singing by the cast, the costuming, the effects, the cinematography is incredible because this film is so melancholy, doom, gloom, and it's just done so, so, so well. Tim Burton does an incredible job. He was the most perfect person to direct this. I absolutely love that the story is so engaging. Johnny Depp does a great job. So, uh, so he's such a bad character because he kills people, but like, y you just, you can't help but be like, yeah, you know, in a weird, weird, morbid way. And Helena Bonham Carter, she did a really good job, I'd say. Alan Rickman's in this. Oh my gosh, it just, he was great. I loved every single second of this film. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. I really was not expecting to like it as much as I did, and oh my goodness. 
I freaking adored this film. Okay, so my big fat Greek wedding. So as a gal, I feel like I'm obligated to see certain chick flicks or else I'm not a gal. <laughs> and this was one of them that I just had never seen. You know what? This is just an incredibly, incredibly charming and sweet romantic comedy. It's romantic comedy done right. It has a good amount of just silly lightheartedness, but also has a really good grounded down to earth feel to it where it's not too unrealistic. I mean, yeah, some of it's a little over the top, but just honestly, the romance even for me wasn't the best part. I thought the whole best part of the film was like her family. And I loved, you know, getting to see her fiance and like how he was coping with it. Apparently this movie was in theaters for a whole year, like 52 weeks. And I'm like, whoa. I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. And speaking of romantic comedies, I the last film I saw in July was Love, Rosie. I had wanted to see for a long time because I read the book Where Rainbows End and I loved the book. So adorable yet so heartfelt. The film never like released in theaters in the United States or it did to like two and a half. It's huge in the UK I'm pretty sure. I love this film y'all. It's so so adorable. Very very fun yet it has its serious moments but it doesn't take itself overly seriously. I'm not a big romance genre fan. I think a lot of it's just very, very boring to me. But I really like films like this where, yeah, there's a good love story and all this stuff, but you really do care for the characters and the chemistry that they have between each other, which is the best thing about this film. Um, Lily Collins and Sam Clothin, when they are together, you can really feel the chemistry between them. You know, you can feel that they are best friends and that, you know, it could be more. And I loved that about this film. You know, sometimes with these movies, you get the, the chemistry is just not there and it's not believable. But with this, it was. The soundtrack in here is very nostalgic. It also has some really good recent songs in here. Lily Collins, I'm... I'm not like the biggest fan of her. I've seen her in things like Abduction and um, City of Bones and I thought she was okay in them. Here I really really liked her. You know, I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. So those are all the films that I watched in this July. I can't wait to show y'all all the films that I will be watching in August of this year. I was gonna say of this month, August of this month. <laughs> I hope all y'all have a wonderful day and stay classy.